The person who invented solar panels is truly a genius, as he made it possible for humanity to have an endless supply of electrical energy. But do you know how he generates electricity? By closely observing the solar panels, you will notice that they are composed of different layers and contain a large number of small cells that, when arranged together, form a specific pattern. These cells are typically made of semiconductor materials, such as silicon, which comes from silicon dioxide found in sand, rocks or quartz, abundant on Earth. During the manufacturing process, pure silicon rods are shaped into rectangular blocks and then sliced into thin sheets about one millimeter thick. However, these thin sheets do not generate electricity on their own. After undergoing multiple processes, they are coated with an anti-reflective layer. The purpose of the anti-reflective layer is to ensure maximum sunlight absorption and reduce reflection, thereby maximizing energy conversion. Solar panels generate electricity based on the movement of electrons and holes within the material. Therefore, they adopt a dual layer structure, with the bottom layer being P-type and the top layer being N-type. When combined, they form a PN junction. To understand the PN junction, we need to start with the structure of silicon. Each silicon atom has four valence electrons in its outer shell. For the P-type layer, atoms like phosphorus have one more electron than silicon. When boron atoms replace some silicon atoms in the crystal lattice, holes are created where electrons are missing. These holes carry a positive charge, forming the P-type layer. Similarly, when silicon is mixed with phosphorus, as phosphorus has one more electron in its outer shell than silicon, one electron remains unbound and becomes a free electron, resulting in an excess of negative charge in the semiconductor material, giving it an n-type negative conductivity. At the junction of the n-type and p-type layers, charge carriers will diffuse, with electrons from the n-type layer diffusing into the p-type layer. The formation of negatively charged regions occurs, while the holes in the p-type layer diffuse to the n-type layer, creating positively charged regions. This results in an electric field at the junction where opposite charges form. This electric field is crucial, as sunlight is composed of photons, carrying a significant amount of energy. When sunlight reaches the surface of the solar panel, photons transfer their energy to the electrons in the semiconductor material, making them highly active and breaking free from atomic bonds. These free electrons can move within the semiconductor layers of the panel, aiding in the generation of current. In a solar panel, the electric field formed by the PN junction helps guide electrons towards the n-type layer, where they can be collected for power generation. They flow continuously in one direction, so an inverter is needed to convert the direct current into alternating current. Thus, the solar panel converts light into electricity. Thank you for watching this video by Australian Control Engineering, ACE. If you found our project insightful and want to see more innovative solutions in SCADA and control systems, don't forget to like, subscribe so you never miss an update from us. Share this video to help spread the word about sustainable engineering solutions. For more information, visit our website. Join us at ACE, where technology meets sustainability.